Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from LaRouche Pack with your daily update for May 26th, 2020. I want to cover three topics today. One is the uh, reopening of the economy. The second is Russiagate as it relates to Joe Biden. And the third is the role of Steve Bannon in pushing for war with China. Uh, let me begin with the whole discussion of reopening the economy. There are many focused on the whole question of the non-productive side, the so-called entertainment, the service side. Uh, and the problem is this makes up a significant portion of the U.S. economy as we've increasingly become a post-industrial economy. What we're talking about is opening bars, restaurants, sports, uh, clubs, uh, tattoo parlors, uh, fingernail uh, parlors. You know, we're talking about a section of the economy which many people orient toward, uh, but which produces very little real wealth. Now, yes, it's been shut down. It, it needs to be reopened. But we need to reopen the economy in a totally different manner, a totally different phase. And one example of the potential for this will take place tomorrow. A rocket will be launched by NASA with SpaceX to send two Americans to the space station, two astronauts. This is the first manned mission in nine years for the United States. We've been relying on Russian rockets to get our astronauts up. This is an extremely important event because it not just uh, marks the return of the United States into space, but it also is part of the Artemis plan, the, the plan by 2024 to put a man and a woman on the moon. Uh, this is the president's program. And President Trump has been very clear that this is a, a very significant aspect of what he wants to do. So this is a good start toward addressing the revival of the real economy. And what do we mean by the real economy? Well, LaRouche Pack has just put out a new program, which I announced yesterday, which is for 50 million new productive jobs in the United States. 50 million new productive jobs. Not passing around paper or entertainment, but producing physical wealth as part of a move toward producing 1.5 billion new productive jobs globally. Uh, this will be an emphasis on not just goods production, that is consumer goods, but the heavy industry, machine tool sector, and most importantly, a return to science, real science, research and development, that will have an immediate effect on improving the productivity of labor and the increase in the real wealth production of our society. So this is extremely important and does represent the kind of thing that, that you'd like to see with the economy. Now on the other side of the economy, we have Joe Biden weighing in on how he is going to make economics one of the key issues of the campaign based on supposedly the great job he did with Barack Obama in 2009 to recover from the Great Recession. This is a bad joke. They created millions of non-productive jobs that barely paid enough for people to stay in their homes. Uh, and it created a new stock and debt bubble which started popping this last year, last summer. They also were talking about a Green New Deal which is again anti-production. The Green New Deal is based on the idea that you eat too much, you consume too much, you drive too much, you fly too much. You're going to have to give up all of that for the phony science of the green policy. Now, at the same time, we're seeing the big banks are uh, moving toward a new level of the debt crisis. Uh, Bloomberg News had a report today that there are billions of dollars coming due in the, in the next weeks and months which will require a direct bailout. The Hertz bankruptcy is a bankruptcy with 20 billion in debt on the line. So we're nowhere out of the woods on the economy. Uh, opening up strip clubs and, and bars and restaurants will not solve the problem. We need real physical production. Go to larouchepack.com to read our program. Now, secondly, on Russiagate, uh, Biden, who essentially has adopted a federal witness protection plan strategy for his campaign of basically disappearing somewhere 
in a basement. Well, he may actually have to join the Federal Witness Protection Program because a judge in Ukraine just said that Biden should be named in a criminal complaint uh, on, for his role in the firing of the former Ukrainian prosecutor, Viktor Shokin. Now, the potential crime is an unlawful interference in Shokin's investigation of Burisma. And as you know, Burisma was the company that hired Biden's son, paid him huge amounts of money, even though he had no experience in the energy business or in Ukraine. And Biden in 2018 bragged that he went to the uh, Ukrainian government, to Poroshenko, and threatened to withhold a billion dollars in loans unless Shokin were fired. And Shokin was eventually dismissed. Now, Biden said he did this because Shokin was corrupt, and that's what all the news media said. But the fact is there's now a 2015 State Department document, a letter, that praised Shokin for his anti-corruption work. Now, Biden was not merely involved in the Burisma case, but he was the point man for Obama in the coup in Ukraine. And so what this will bring up with Biden is all the, the uh, nonsense in the Ukraine impeachment against President Trump, Biden's role in working with neo-Nazis and working with George Soros and the National Endowment of, for Democracy, the war hawk faction of the State Department under Victoria Nuland and the whole Clinton apparatus, the whole Barack Obama apparatus. Biden ran it, again, using neo-Nazi militia, the Azov Battalion, as the muscle for the coup in Ukraine. Uh, this is not a good look for a man running for president from his basement. And hopefully it will allow the potential to bring up the whole role of Obama and Biden in provoking a potential conflict with Russia, which President Trump used in his campaign in 2016 to run against. That is, he wanted to work with Russia, not go to war with Russia. Now, speaking of war and speaking of Soros, we have the lamentable case of the slob Steve Bannon. Now, Bannon is in the news again. He just gave an interview where he said, we are at war with the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, his actual quote was, we are not on the brink of war, we are at war. Now, Bannon is pushing for a total economic decoupling from China. Were that to occur, Without a policy for manufacturing in the United States to revive manufacture, it would be a disaster. Secondly, it would be a disaster because the United States and China should be cooperating for the sake of each other's economy, but also more importantly, as part of an arrangement to rebuild the world economy, to join together as two of the four powers for LaRouche's four power agreement for a new Bretton Woods financial system. This is what Trump was orienting toward before the Russia Gate story. He continued to stick with the Chinese even up to January and February of this year where he was praising them. And then all of a sudden, as the crisis worsened with coronavirus and, and with the lockdown, and his poll numbers, at least according to Fox, were dropping, this was used by people like Pompeo and Bannon to tell Trump, you'd better get tough with China and use it against Biden for the election. Now, in arguing that this is a violation of the basic law that was signed as part of the Russian, I'm sorry, the Chinese-British agreement for the British to leave Hong Kong. Remember, Hong Kong was a British colony for over 150 years where there was major drug money laundering through the banks of Hong Kong. But under the one country, two systems basic law agreement, there was one part of that which said that the Chinese government will not allow subversion, uh, interference of foreign organizations in Hong Kong. That Hong Kong can be a capitalist enclave in China. They will not interfere with the economy and commerce, but they will not allow foreign interventions into Hong Kong. Now, Who's getting involved in Hong Kong? Ah, National Endowment for Democracy. George Soros. And working directly with Soros to push for war 
is Steve Bannon. Now, this is part of the coup apparatus of the U.S. State Department, the CIA, and other such agencies. The president said he was going to put an end to these unlawful military-industrial complex, small and regional wars. Well, Bannon and others want him to get into a big war with China. And I think this is something you should look at when you hear all these attacks on China. How much of this is similar to the vilification of Putin and also of Donald Trump by the networks which today are telling Trump, if you want to win the election, get tough with China. So keep your uh, eyes on this spot because we'll have updates on the Biden-Ukraine case and also on what's going on with China. And remember, go to the LaRouchePact.com to look at the video on the 1.5 billion new productive jobs which can be created as part of a U.S. economic recovery. So until tomorrow, I'll see you then.